Heroes and History, read to you by Elizabeth Clare. Watergate The year 1972 was an election year. President Richard Nixon, a Republican, was running for a second term. He was running against the Democratic candidate, George McGovern. The Watergate is a very large office complex and hotel in Washington, D.C. The Democratic National Committee had offices on the sixth floor of the Watergate office building. The break-in. Late at night on June 17, 1972, a security guard discovered a break-in at the Democratic offices at the Watergate. He called the police. The police arrested five men. The men had equipment for bugs and wiretapping. Who hired these burglars? Who paid them? The burglars would not say. A grand jury indicted the burglars. They pleaded guilty. They would not give any information. Police found checks in some of the burglars' pockets. The checks were from the bank account for the Republican Committee for the re-election of the President. the election. Americans did not think that the President of the United States was connected with the Watergate break-in. Richard Nixon won re-election in a landslide that November. Newspaper reporters started to dig into the case. They reported other connections they found between the burglars and the Republican committee to re-elect the president. The Justice Department appointed an independent prosecutor, Archibald Cox, to investigate the case. Congress decided to investigate too. The Senate Watergate Committee asked the President's aides to come in to answer questions. Americans watched the hearings on nationwide television every day in the spring and summer of 1973. It started to become clear that there was a cover-up. The tape recordings. In July, a former aide told the Watergate Committee that the president recorded all the meetings in his offices. The committee asked the president to give them the tape recordings. Prosecutor Archibald Cox subpoenaed the tapes. President Nixon would not hand them over. He ordered Archibald Cox to stop the subpoena. Cox would not do it. The Saturday Night Massacre On October 20th, 1973, Nixon asked Attorney General Elliot Richardson to fire Archibald Cox. Richardson refused to do it. He resigned. Nixon then asked the Deputy Attorney General William Ruckelshaus to fire Cox. Ruckelshaus also refused and resigned. Robert H. Bork 
became the acting attorney general. Nixon ordered Bork to fire Cox, and he did. The newspapers called this series of events the Saturday Night Massacre. On July 24th, 1974, the Supreme Court ruled that the president must give the tapes to the government investigators. The Smoking Gun The tapes proved without a doubt that Nixon had worked to cover up the crime. They showed that he had ordered his aides to pay hush money to stop people from talking to the investigators. They showed that Nixon had ordered other crimes in order to get reelected. His own words on the tape recordings became the smoking gun. After listening to the tapes, Nixon's own lawyers realized the truth. The president had lied to the nation, lied to his closest aides, and lied to his own lawyers for more than two years. Newspapers printed the conversations from the tapes. Americans were shocked by the president's criminal behavior. In addition, 18 minutes of one tape were blank. Who erased it? What did Nixon talk about in those 18 minutes? Shortly after Americans read what was on the tapes, they lost their trust in Nixon. Will he be impeached? On July 27, 1974, the House Judiciary Committee voted 27 to 11 to start the impeachment of the president. His crimes were obstruction of justice, abuse of power, and contempt of Congress. To impeach a president, a majority of the members of the House of Representatives must vote for it. If they do, the president will be on trial in the Senate. Two-thirds of the senators can convict the president and remove him from office. Nixon's advisors told him the bad news. It was certain that the House would vote to impeach him. It was also certain that the Senate would convict him. They told him he should resign. On August 9, 1974, Nixon made a speech to the nation. He said he was resigning for the sake of the country. He denied that he had done anything wrong. His vice president, Gerald R. Ford, became president. Most Americans expected that the government would arrest Nixon for the crimes he had committed as president. They believed no one is above the law. However, one month later, President Ford pardoned President Nixon. Ford explained that the pardon was in the best 
interest of the country. Gerald Ford ran for re-election in 1976, but lost. That may have been because of his pardon of Nixon. Since then, the word Watergate brings up memories of this big scandal. In other government scandals, news reporters now often add the word gate to the main idea. <laughs>